Hi everyone, um, my name is Christina Ryan. For those who don't know me, I'm a senior texture artist at Industrial Light and Magic. I'm also a judge on the Rookies and the host of this interview series. Um, for those of you who've been watching and following along, uh, if every like about two weeks we go ahead and interview the winners and um, of their Rookies Awards for the 2022. Um, this week we have uh, Tom Tomeo, who was the winner of our architectural visualization category, and his work was absolutely beautiful. It had an amazing, he's got an amazing eye for composition and detail and also style, which is what we love. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce Tom straight away. Hey, Tom. Hello, hello, Chris. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and for coming on, coming online today. <laughs> Um, so guys, for those of you watching live, um, if you have any questions, this is meant to be really casual. So pop them in the chat and I'll go ahead and um, pass the questions on to Tom for you. It's always a great opportunity if you're an inspired student um, and you want to know more about how to get into this industry. Fantastic opportunity to learn. Hey, Marcus. So um, Tom, could you start off by just telling everyone a little bit about yourself? So uh, first of all, uh, good morning to everyone. So uh, I'm Mr. Tomai, and you can just call me Tom. So uh, I'm currently residing here in the Philippines. So um, to tell you something about my background, so uh, uh, way back in my high school, uh, I used to be uh, an editorial cartoonist or an illustrator for uh, the official publication of our school. So I used to draw editorial cartooning and illustration for our newspaper, and then I also uh, used to join for uh, different competition for uh, editorial cartooning. So I have been to uh, district level, division level, up to national level for that competition. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's where I get my, that's where I got my interest in art. And then uh, from then on, uh, uh, I was inspired to pursue art. And I think, uh, that really has a big influence in my decision in choosing what uh, degree will I pursue uh, in college. So uh, so in college, I took a five years degree course in Bachelor of Science, uh, major in architecture. So during my stay in college, uh, I used to be an editorial cartoonist as well. And uh, yeah, so I graduated in 2018. Yes. Yeah, yeah, in the, in the college. So, so after I uh, graduated in 2018, uh, so uh, the law said the law said here in the Philippines that in order for me to be legible and qualified to take the licensure examination for the architects, I, I have to undergo two years uh, diversified architectural experience. Yeah. So for, yeah, so for uh, two years, uh, I work as a junior architect. So from 2018 to 2020. Yeah. I work as a junior architect and then I was uh, technically involved from design, to, from schematic to design to construction phase of a project, but mostly I work in 2D. So I work in AutoCAD. So from, uh, I really don't have, uh, uh, I haven't started working in 3D during that time. Right. And then, yeah, and then, uh, and then in 2020, after I took my apprenticeship, so in 2020, I was supposed to take the licensure examination for the architects, yes. but that was also the time that the COVID and uh, the yeah. pandemic was widely yeah. spread, right? And so, so the examination was postponed for so many times. So I have no other choice but to take another job again. Yeah. So during pandemic, I work again as a junior architect but that time there was also uh there was also the time where the uh uh where the were strictly uh guidelines were being implemented and as a mm -hmm. matter of fact uh, the government uh here in the philippines uh implemented the uh, work from home setup yeah and then so during that time uh i have no pc i have no i have a laptop but uh, relatively weak yeah. So I have no other choice but to stay at the office. Yeah. So I work and stay and I sleep at the office for almost one month. I for almost four oh. months alone. Yeah. Crazy. But, 
but uh, I took that opportunity to that alone time to improve myself. So every night uh, during that time, uh, I watch a lot of webinars yes. about the uh, archivist, uh, about the archivist, the technical yeah. side and the business yeah. side of the archivist, and then yeah, and then finally uh, last year, uh, November 2021, I decided to quit my job and then uh, decided to pursue and finally decided to pursue Archibis. So I bought myself uh, a PC and then, uh, yeah, so I can apply all the, uh, everything that I have learned from webinars that I have seen. And then, uh, yeah, and then, but switching back to my career as an architect, uh, finally, uh, January of this year, I was yeah. able to take the licensure examination and was able to pass the examination. Oh so my technically, God, congratulations! Technically, I'm just a newly licensed architect, yes. but yeah. then again, I have already decided that I will uh, that I will dedicate my time pursuing archivist because I really love it and I yeah. really love doing images. And oh, that's amazing. I um, was absolutely inspired by your circumstances yeah. after reading your story. And you know what? Like, it's fantastic that you've taken the examination. It's, some, you know, it's obviously something that you really wanted to do. You've now achieved it. You've got, you've got it yeah. there if you want to go back. But it sounds like yeah. art is really something. It's what you're good at. Um, yeah. And I really hope that you keep moving forward down this path because you're so talented. Um, Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about, so you said you you were struggling financially, but you bought yourself a computer and then you yeah, studied yeah. this, you learned all of this yourself. Um, yeah. How did you stay motivated um, when everything was sort of against you? How did you stay motivated to keep going? So yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, I watch a lot of webinars, um, yes. mostly from uh, uh, big names from this uh, industry, from the uh, archivist industry. So yeah. I think I have seen almost all the videos from D2 Conference, if you're familiar with D2 Conference, from no, uh, no. by Fabio and Jason, Pal Pal I, by Fabio Palbelli and Jason Bergeron, and as well, and also the 3D London, uh, which is by Nigel Hunt yeah. and Simon, so yeah. So from watching those uh, webinars, uh, especially the 3D London TV, uh, that's where I saw Rasmussen. Yeah. So Rasmussen is the rookie of the year for the architecture, uh, architectural yeah. visualization category in 2019. 2019, so, I was doing it then, but yeah. 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 So the 3D people, uh, so the 3D folks, 3D London folks uh, interview him. And then uh, for me, their talks was very inspiring. So. When I watched that, uh, so when I watched that video, that was also the time that I'm just starting to dive into this uh, industry. So yeah. I was very inspired from those uh, people. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, that, that makes me so happy to hear. Um, goodness. And I mean, what, uh, like, have you had 3D experience? Did you get to use 3D programs as a junior architect? Or was it quite different, the job role? Well, when I work as a junior architect, I only use uh, 2D programs, such as AutoCAD. Right, yeah. okay. So I haven't touched 3D yeah. program when I work as a junior architect. Yeah. Oh, OK. So it was brand new to you. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. That's even better. Yeah. Um, I guess, um, at what point did you decide to, I suppose, move into ArcVis? I guess you'd had a couple different inspirational points. Was there a particular defining factor where you just went, you know what, I really just want to move into 3D? Well, uh, for me, uh, uh, it's really, uh, I've been struggling really uh, to uh, to uh, focus my career as an architect here in the Philippines because uh, it's really hard. Yeah, I bet. So, yeah, it's really hard. And then, uh, but, but yeah, uh, when I saw uh, when I saw those people in the archivist industry and the way they talk and and also most of them are from architect industry that switched to archivist architectural visualization. So it's kind of very inspiring for me. Yes. 
yeah and also uh i also used to attend uh different uh events and uh, different events and uh, uh online webinars yeah so, and then and recently uh, i have been i've been to uh binyan event if you're familiar with binyan mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah uh, so they organize an event here in the philippines so i met there uh, a lot of great people so i met andre the ceo yeah. and andre i met uh, christopher and nick bow and yeah it was really inspiring to meet uh mostly uh, face-to-face to meet those people that you really look up to yeah and it was really inspiring for me yeah to talk to them yeah, and to talk to them personally was just crazy yeah Oh, it's so good. Um, it's always great meeting, you know, your seniors. I've always found that to be yeah. inspiring. Um, it's always great to have someone to look up to, hey. Um, yeah. oh, so, I mean, what made you enter the Rookie Awards? How did you How did you hear about us? Was it through the 2019 winner? Yeah, yeah. through yeah. that interview uh, that I saw, uh, Rasmussen, uh, that I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, that's uh, when I... Uh, decided to enter the rookie so that was yep. also the time that uh, i'm doing personal project yeah st- study project that i studied by my own so yep. yeah, i decided to so those entries of mine that i sent to the rookies yep. uh, those were my personal project yeah oh, wow um can, well talk speaking of your rookies awards we have your pictures up at the moment can you tell okay. us a little bit more about your entry and what inspired them Okay, okay. That one, uh, yeah. that one is entitled uh, "White, uh, White and Classic." Yeah. So, uh, that uh, entries of mine was inspired by Jacob Sek. Jacob Sek is a 3D artist from Slovakia, so he's very a great artist, and he's really one of my inspiration. Yeah. And yeah, he's a really great artist. And then, uh, as you can see on those pictures of mine. Uh, if I can just share my, if I can just share my mood board, so you can see the, so uh, you can yeah. see my inspiration from that image. Uh, yeah. So of, I can go down. Can I share that? Oh, would you like to share your screen? Yep. If you want to share your screen, go ahead. And okay. We can okay. Get that up and running. Uh, how about? Mm-hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. Here we go. Even better. Oh yes. Yeah. So. He, so yeah this image war was uh this image is by jacob sec yeah so he yeah. he is from as you can see this was the tree the white and classic and yeah i tried to study uh, his techniques his yeah. uh the way how he composed his image and yeah. i think uh for me uh my output uh speak for itself of how i understand and how i was inspired by his works mm-hmm. uh, and other and also uh, most of my inspiration aside from coming from 3d artists also come from a real photograph for example this one uh, can you see the yeah. can you saw it yeah i can see so this is the pool side oh yeah i loved this one. Oh yeah so this uh so this one are real photograph so this architecture is located in mexico so yeah. i really love this architecture that's why i try to imitate and try to yeah. yeah i try to recreate the feeling yeah yeah i can see that now so and then aside from real photographs from uh, 3d artists yeah. i also got my inspiration from photographer oh, so okay. so uh this uh, image is from a photographer named uh, william Agustin. yeah if you can see it in my one of my entries the entitled 90s diner yeah so this was my inspiration so it's a real photograph so william eggleston is a photographer from 80s he is famous yeah. and known and one of the prominent who use uh colored photography so yeah mm-hmm. that's uh, where i usually get my uh inspiration yeah wow no i can say that now um let me just again i can show you yeah, yeah, that one. So this is it here. Um, pretty good. Yeah. yeah I try to recreate it and then put uh, 
touch for myself. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, it's really great seeing, and it's not just for archivists, but for um, visual effects as well. Um, mm. Most entrants I see, they have a concept art that they draw inspiration from. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to do that because, I mean, at the end of the day, it is, um, we're not here to purely design things. It's sort of someone else has the vision and we create it from that. Yeah. Um, I mean, in arc viz, I assume you have a bit of a brief. You probably have a little bit more freedom to add what you like, add your personal touch to it, I imagine. Yeah, on doing personal project, but when doing yeah. a commercial project, most of the time, the architect is the one who leads. Yes, yeah. yeah. And um, exactly, so you are drawing from someone else's inspiration and yeah. it's really important in the industry to be able to um, or to be able to do that and not just, um, you don't need to always come up with ideas out of your head, yeah, so yeah. which is always quite daunting for new artists. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm what I especially love about the art quiz category is it's really that attention to composition and style. Um, everything is so stylish and very well presented. Um, so yeah, brilliant work with that. Um, what about the, um, there's a entry, this one here. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about this picture? I absolutely love this one. Actually, uh, this uh, entry of mine, I also uh, submit this entry to the Architizer One Rendering Challenge. Yep, yep. And I was uh, included in the top 100 uh, finalists. Oh Amazing. Yes. So uh, I forget the title of this one. <laughs> But, um, uh, it's about uh, nature calling calling the human to nature, yeah, something like yes. that. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, so, I mean, Tom, I suppose, did you have anything else that you'd like to share? Um, you mentioned that you would like to share your 3DX Max scene. Um, I think okay. that would be really cool to show everyone when I get that up. Okay, okay. So, I personally haven't worked with 3DX Max. Uh, is it similar to Maya? I actually, I haven't seen Maya yet. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, can you see? Can you see my... Uh, yeah, here we go. And guys, um, for those of you watching live, please pop a question in if you have anything, because you, you know, if you're inspired to ask anything while this is up, it's a great opportunity to um, get your questions answered. So take the lead, Tom. I can I can see your um, okay. you scene. Okay. Okay. So uh, so uh, this uh, project is called the uh, Casa Holpox. So this architecture is located in Mexico. So mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, it was uh, very uh, what? So I use I use uh, in the lighting. I use for the general lighting. I use uh, I use HDRI for the general lighting. So this was my HDRI. It's very uh, simple, as you can see. And then uh, after I use uh, HDRI for general lighting, I then added uh, Corona, Corona Sun so I can uh, direct where the light is coming from and also so I can add more contrast to the image. So as you can see here, this one. And then in terms of uh, shaders, uh, I use a very simple shaders, for example. Uh, uh, just sorry to interrupt, Tom. Do you have two screens open at the time? Because I can only see the viewport at the moment. So if you're sharing another screen, I can only see one of them. Oh. How no, about now? How about now? Can you see the slate material editor? No, that's weird. It might be because are you sharing your entire screen or just a window? Uh, I'm sharing a window. Yeah, um, if you want to just give another go sharing your okay, entire okay. screen, because I reckon it's not allowing us to see the pop up windows. Okay. <laughs> so we go, try again. Okay, yeah. let me try again. If not, it's all good. It's all good. I've got a few Next questions screen. about what I can see in the viewport. Here we go. Um, How about that's, now? Yeah, that's way better. Awesome. Okay. 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 
So uh, for example, in terms of shaders, I use a very simple shader. For example, yeah. these planters. Can you mm -hmm. see it? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So for example, it's very, it's very very simple. Yeah, you can see. Okay. Uh, and on the walls. And these are just textures that you're just popping into the shader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And most of this material from Quicksell. Yeah, yeah, I use Quicksell most of the time. And oh, uh, I so yeah, uh, so my scene for me was very uh, simple. I just tried to imitate a real photograph. Oh, beautiful! The lighting is stunning. And then, as you can see here, this funny story about you. So you can see there's a, a tree that is flipped upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to capture the shadow. I was just trying to capture the shadow. Oh my goodness, I love that so much. <laughs> you can make it work for the shot, right? <laughs> but in the final image, you can see it, right? Yeah, adds that beautiful shadow across the pool. Um, yeah. With these assets, so. Tom, are these, like, do you, because I know a lot of art quiz um, students, or even in the industry as well, you tend to purchase the assets, and it's more about, like, com composing them and putting them all together. Did you... Is that what your process, or did you make some of the things in there? Uh, so during that time, uh, I can't afford buying those assets. So what I did is I really spent a lot of time searching for free, yep. free uh, yep. assets. Yep. But so yeah, most of these assets are free. Yep. Most are from 3D right. Warehouse or Quicksell. Yeah. So yeah, I don't usually use uh, 3D assets that you can buy somewhere else yep, yeah yeah no that's it goes to show what you can do um for free you don't need a lot of money to be able to do that hey uh, yeah exactly um but you still build so you would have built all of the floor and the walls and the main structure yeah, yeah. And things like that yeah. yeah yeah i used to do a little bit of that in my first job and um mm -hmm. i used to love it it was like a, almost like sim city in a way because you'd build up the environment <laughs> and build up the houses and stuff i used to love yeah. it um, so I suppose, Tom, um, before we wrap up, do you have any advice for anyone wanting to get into this industry? So, uh, first of all, uh, okay, as, uh, first of all, uh, listen to yourself if you really want this and follow your heart, then listen to your heart. Then when you finally decided to enter to this, uh, industry, uh, be prepared and, uh, and when you are uh, doing those entries uh, to send or to submit to the rookies, uh, just yeah. enjoy the journey, and um, yeah. and always challenge yourself uh, because so you can learn uh, something new every time. And uh, because uh, because for me uh, the only way to test our knowledge and capabilities is through obstacles. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I remember, I remember this quote from a book uh, that says, uh, "There's only one thing that makes a dream impossible to achieve, and that yeah. is the fear of failure. So uh, don't be afraid of failure. Uh, instead, uh, made seven failure and then uh, get back up eight times. <laughs> and yeah. last, uh, and then uh, last but not the least." Uh, there's only one way to learn, and that is through action. So, yeah, that's all. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to write these down and put them on my wall. They're beautiful quotes. <laughs> Actually, those those were uh, quotes that I just recently uh, read from a book. If you're familiar with The Alchemist, yeah, I just read them. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, uh, it's very inspiring. Very, very inspiring stuff, yeah. Tom. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it's always it's always really hard to jump into an artistic career, isn't it? Because a lot of people yeah. tell you it's not possible. Um, yeah. But you're great that it is. So well done. You made it. Um, we do have a question from um, Tarragon Gamer. What are your main sources of materials? Uh, yeah, uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, as you mentioned before that, I usually use uh, 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 assets or shaders from uh, from uh, Quixel or yeah. Uh, from yeah most of the time from Quixel and then I just uh, but uh, 
most of the time uh, I made it myself. Yeah. I construct it from scratch to yeah. yeah to the to final yeah. Yeah, very good stuff. I think it's always great to at least make a few things yourself so you understand the process and yeah, 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 exactly. the process. Um, go ahead and purchase some things or buy some things um, to make the process faster and quicker and easier. But um, when I was doing this stuff, we had a team that would, we would just make all of the things. So we spent a couple of weeks just making everything we needed and the rest of the weeks we would like put them all together in different things. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it seems like there's a lot of free resources out there as well. Yeah. Um, that, you know, and quite often you can get these free assets and just, um, I guess, modify them a bit. Hey, Tom, just maybe put your own textures on them or add a few more things to them to make them good. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, unless we have any more questions, Tom, I think um, we'll wrap up. And, um, oh, no, we got one more. This is great. Um, I love when people ask questions. Um, what workflow do you use for your materials? Is it PBR or reflection and gl glossiness or some other? So is it like a metal rough workflow, spec color? Or is it, what, what render are you using, I suppose? I'm using uh, Corona. Corona, okay. Corona what renders. Maps do you plug into them? I haven't used that one before. Uh, sorry, uh, can you? What, what maps do you use? Is it the diff color or is it base color, metallicness? Ah, uh, metallic. Uh, I just use the very, uh, how do you call this? Uh, how you usually do a material. So I just touch the glossiness if the yeah. materials is just so simple. For example, my background. So for example, yeah. my background, these are my works. So for oh. example, uh, a white fold, I just touch the uh, reflection and then yeah. put it to one, then the glossiness yeah. up to uh say 5.5 something like that yeah it's yeah. just it's just very very simple yeah right okay so it looks like a reflect glossiness workflow um i haven't personally worked with that one um it's interesting because glossiness um it's opposite to roughness which is what i'm used to so if, if i ever get maps in glossiness i always get really confused <laughs> um yeah cool. all right so correct and that's is that a 3dx max does that come with that or did you have to purchase that one? Current, is well, it current? Uh, uh, yeah, it's already in Corona. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Cool. And also uh, how as, uh, when I see, so when you download those uh, pre materials, so there's a lot of maps, right? Yeah. So if there's some maps that I don't know how to use, then I just don't use it at all. <laughs> yeah. it looks right. good, as long as it looks good and it makes yeah, it really yeah exactly. all that matters sometimes hey Tom <laughs> we do the same we do the same thing all the time it's like yeah as long as it looks good it's um yeah. it looks plausible great cool <laughs> all right um well Tom you enjoy the rest of your day thank you I assume you have to get up a bit early for this meeting so thank you so much for no, joining thanks. and so thanks for those um everyone watching um i hope you got something out of this um and feel a little bit inspired um and yeah have a wonderful day everyone <laughs> thank you so much tom you and yeah, any questions, have a great weekend you too okay. um re please reach out if you need anything at any time um the guys at the rookies are always happy to help um yeah <laughs> all the very best see ya okay, see everyone bye -bye. <laughs> I'll leave you with um, Tom's show wheel so you can watch it again. <laughs>